Welcome to Metro Focus. In this episode, we'll explore Northern Virginia and some of the best places to live, work, and play. We'll take you to some booming hotspots with that Virginia vibe and some neighborhood favorites. Sample the best mac and cheese in the country. Find great produce, baked breads, and more on a trip to the farmer's market. Or enjoy a night out at an intimate and award-winning theater. Discover these treasures in transit-friendly communities and how Metro will get you there. Plus, everyone loves to save money, so don't lose out. Learn about Metro's Smart Benefits Program and how Metro is empowering customers with disabilities and seniors to travel on the system independently. So sit back now and come along for this Metro Focus ride. So we're here with Tina Leone from the Boston Bid, the Business Improvement District mm -hmm. here. Um, what a great neighborhood Boston has. It is a great neighborhood. When I started this job, they said, why the heck does Boston need a bid? Because it's so wonderful already. But nobody knew about it, so that's why we're here. Well, Metro came here in 1979, and that was really a starting point of the growth for Boston, wasn't it? It's, it absolutely was. They just did it right. Putting the Metro in, putting it in underground, allowing the buildings and the and the density to grow around the metro uh, it's just it really has been the catalyst for growth in Arlington especially Boston we have an incredible concentration of scientists and creative minds here we have organizations like DARPA we have a number of education institutions including uh, Virginia Tech and Marymount George Mason all of that creates this incredible nexus for innovation and creativity we have grown into 80 80 plus restaurants and more coming so there there is a wide variety of cuisines that are available. If you want to watch the game, there's plenty of places to watch the game, especially the Caps game, because we are the home of the Caps. <laughs> so, but there's music, uh, there's more family-friendly activities that are starting to occur in the, in the afternoons. Live, work, and play. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like all great that's, things, right? Yeah, that's all what every, every neighborhood strives for that. We've achieved it. I, we, I, I always say this, I think that Bolson is, is a neighborhood that others are really working to get to, and it took about 30 years to get here. For us, it's just, what's what's the next level of that? And that's where the bid really comes in to add the next layer of innovation, the next layer of amazing programs and events and activities, really get people to feel connected here. I lived here 15 years ago, and I did not feel this sense of community that I feel today. We're here with Katherine Roper, who's the Chief Marketing Officer for the Boston Bid, and one of your big events in May is the Taste of Arlington. Tell me what to expect. It is a phenomenal festival that we do in the heart of Boston. We will hopefully get about 50 restaurants participating from all of Arlington, not just Boston. Um, so it's a nice opportunity for us to get Roslyn and Crystal City and, and those restaurants involved, but here in Boston where we can you know, shed the spotlight on our great neighborhood. And is it an all-day affair? So I can, can I come and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner? You can come at noon. Um, <laughs> give us a little time to get to get it all out there. But noon to 6 p.m. Yep, at six hours, and it's all right there on Wilson Boulevard. So you can just get your tickets and use those tickets for actually not just eating but drinking as well. Um, we will have over 30 different types of craft beer at the event. It is Sunday, May 15th. You can purchase your tickets in advance online through the Taste of Arlington website. Uh, you. Can you can also purchase tickets at a discounted rate through our app, which is called Boston Connect. And of course, you can come that day using cash or credit. What you'll do is you'll use a ticket to purchase a taste, which can be either for food or for drink. All this benefits our charity, which is the Arlington Food Assistance Center. And if you want to just come and enjoy the music and the atmosphere, it's and all fun, free. It's all free. It's all right? free. Enjoy yourself. Yes, yeah. hang out, have a good time. We'll have tables. We'll yeah. have chairs set outside. So hopefully, we have a beautiful day. We will. <laughs> Balsam truly has evolved into becoming a place for people to live and work, play, learn, shop, I mean, you name it. There's so many options and varieties here, uh, and there's more to come. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. 
Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. I'm Alex Levy. I'm the artistic director here at First Stage in Tysons, Virginia. And what a great theater you have here. It's such an intimate setting, whether you're in the first row or the back row. Part of the thing that I think makes First Stage special is that we're able to do fairly large productions and with really strong production values, but keep uh, the, the aesthetic very intimate. The magic of what live theater is, is that you are really connected to it. You become a part of it. You can hear the natural voice of the performer. You can um, sort of live and breathe and feel the emotions of the story with them. It really is a hidden gem here in Tyson's Corner, isn't it? It is. Unfortunately, sometimes you can be standing just down the block and not know it, but, uh, but we're beca the secret's out, I think. And, and uh, you have what was just an indescript strip mall here that my predecessor gutted this building and built it eight years ago. As soon as you cross the threshold here, I think you feel the energy of First Stage, which is a warm energy. It is a company that is built on the idea of bringing world-class theater to our community and to be a hub for our community where that kind of experience can happen. And it's really convenient to get here because the metro is just down the street. Absolutely. The, the Silver Line Spring Hill stop is just about a block and a half down. It's, uh, it's about as easy as can be there. The Silver Line stop opened um, just about two years ago. Instantaneously, we saw people starting to show up via train. Um, it also had a huge impact on our artists who, who come here. Many of our actors take the train every day here. Tell us about the actors and the people that you have yeah. here. Where do they come from? We have an amazing talent pool here in the D.C. area. And the, one of the great things about our intimate space is that the actors that you'll see on our stage are the same actors you'll see at the largest theaters in D.C. Part of our goal and our job is to, to um, get great artists and put them in a position to do their best work. And so to be able to be a part of that with artists of that level um, in a house this small, this intimate, is really um, a rare opportunity and one of the things that I think makes this place so special. You know, DC theater is going through an amazing uh, growth and renaissance right now. I think the entire country is watching the DC theater community. We had E.M. Lewis's play, Now Comes the Night, make its world premiere here, and the entire world was watching that. And, and already DC was on the national stage, but, but to have uh, that much coverage and event of that nature, I think really um, propelled us a step forward and that there really can be world-class theater here and we've been really fortunate that, that the, um, the community understands that and recognizes that and that if we are going to have not just a place but a home here in, in Tysons and Fairfax County that the arts and culture need to be a part of that. And as we head back towards the backstage here, you can see some of our production archive here of, of shows that we've done in the past. This is Old Wicked Songs, which is the show that's up for best production at this year's Helen Hayes, and Phil Hosford here is up for best lead actor. Um, One Man, Two Governors, which uh, was nominated, I think, for seven, uh, including best production, and, and won uh, several. Um, Katie here was nominated for best lead actress. Mm -hmm. And I have to point out as a couple things as we're doing down here. Alex Mandel, um, who you'll see all over DC theaters now, who is one of our founding artists. He helped build this place. This is three years ago, Alex was standing on our stage and now is, uh, is standing on Broadway stages. Um, so we're really proud of him. And Doug Wilder, who won last year's Helen Hayes Award for Best Lead Actor as well. One of the things that I think has really been um, special for First Stage being nominated and winning these awards um, is that we're such a young company. Mm -hmm. And so when we, uh, at now just our eighth year, are um, seeing our name next to, you know, the theaters that have been doing this for 40, 50 years. It's, it's really a, a really special recognition. Mm -hmm. It's not why we do it, it's not the, yeah. the important thing, but, but uh, it's always really um, an honor and, and humbling when it happens. 
As we talk about our future, it it's always includes the metro and how great it is to be right here next to the metro. And as, the, as more and more people get used to taking the silver line and as more and more is changing out here, um, it puts us in a great position to grow and continue to grow and uh, to reach new heights. My name's Pat Miller. I'm the manager of the Delray Farmers Market, and that's where we are right now in Alexandria, Virginia. Farmers markets have changed a lot since we opened 30 years ago because it really was only vegetables and fruits and some meats. You know, now we have fish, we have all sorts of different bakery goods, we have cheese, we have yogurt, and so the whole flavor of what a farmers market is has changed and the neighborhood loves it. They keep asking for more of this, more of that. We here at the Dairy Farmers Market have the Metro right at our doorstep. They stop here every half hour or so. People get off, they come into the market, they go wait, and they get back on. So the, the access is perfect for this market. Parking is a problem here for the farmer's market on Saturday mornings, and it just seems like there's a lot more people than there are cars, and so I know people walk or take the metro to get here. Well, one thing we do here at the Delray Farmer's Market is we encourage nonprofits to come or city agencies to come and tell our residents that come to the market what they're about, are they doing something new, something different. So we have a community side to the market as well as selling all of our wonderful fresh produce and bakery goods and, and we even got fresh fish now. What I like most about this neighborhood are the people. The people are amazing and um, you know we're a front porch community. In other words, we, we all have front porches and we talk to our neighbors and you go out and you do stuff with your neighbors and that's what this neighborhood is all about. You taught him how to hit a baseball. Just like that. Say hi! How to hit a receiver. Nice. The strike zone. Taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? My name is Nina Larkin. I'm the front of house manager here at Cheesecake in Delray. So Cheesecake is a cheese shop and a restaurant, so it's a very unique concept. Um, in the Delray neighborhood, we have nothing quite like it, uh, so it kind of fits this little niche in the community. We have a very small management team here at Cheesecake. We have a store director that is in control of the whole store, including the kitchen and the restaurant. Um, but we also have a front of house manager, which is my position, where I help run the retail store and the restaurant. And then we have an assistant front of house manager, so it's only three people. Oh, and then we have a kitchen manager. <laughs> we actually just uh, announced our opening of our third location. It's going to be in Boston in Arlington. It's 
much bigger. We're really excited about it and it's hopefully opening in early summer, if not sooner. And with every season, we like to roll out new menus. So very soon we're rolling out all brand new menus, new wine lists. Cheesesteak has been open for 12 wonderful years here in Delray. Our other location has been open for five years. We actually have three Facebooks. We have our Del Rey, our Shirlington, and we have a new one for our Balsam store, so you can go on and follow that to see when we're opening. So our owner, Jill Erber, lives in Del Rey and decided that uh, Cheese Teak was kind of something that the community would really love here. Uh, we're a very strong local community, and uh, they really love their local independent businesses. We're about a mile away from the metro here, so it's not too close, but we also have a lot of um, employees that commute from uh, further away, so they use both the metro bus and the metro. And I think that uh, with DC being only 20 minutes away, it helps bring families that work in DC into living in this community, so it's more of a walking community that work, um, comes to dine here. So the metro has impacted this neighborhood in that it's kind of developed a commuter environment where we, it's kind of brought in a lot of younger families, uh, people from DC that live out here and have helped develop the neighborhood from where before it didn't really have any businesses on this block and now we've got you know, 10 different local independent businesses around. In the past 14 years, we've had a lot more community events, a lot more businesses pop up in the area and it's really helped develop the neighborhood. I love that we're such a small, tight-knit neighborhood. It's kind of the place where you walk to the bank and you wave at the butcher as you go by and everybody really knows each other. Not only are we a local business in the neighborhood, but we also support other local businesses in that we carry a lot of uh, products that people that live in the neighborhood, live in DC, create. One thing I always try to do is look for local creameries so I can carry local cheeses. We have uh, several Virginia wines, one we're trying to put on our wine list. Um, my favorite local products are chocolates, uh, because who doesn't like tasting chocolate? Uh, but we also carry local jams, local hams. Didn't mean to rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> so the one cool thing about cheese is that a lot of it uh, comes from overseas, a lot of it's European. Um, we try and get the real deal stuff here as much as we can. We focus on artisan producers, small production, and anything unique. We're specialty food shops, so we really try to go for those stuff that you can't find elsewhere. One of the things I love most about working for Cheese Teak, it's not just getting to taste product as part of my job, but it's also working for the small business and really respecting the people that I work for. My name is Angie Fox and I am the President and CEO of the Crystal City Business Improvement District. Crystal City is a very business oriented community with about 30,000 office workers right here in the shadow of the Pentagon. Um, we have about 11,000 residents and uh, 5,200 hotel rooms. So it is a burgeoning community with new activity coming in and out all of the time. And we have great restaurants. In fact, we have three celebrity chefs that have restaurants next door to each other, including Spike Mendelson and Jose Andres. Um, we have also some really funky, fun retail spaces like what we're standing in here right now, which is Tech Shop, a 21,000 square foot maker space. Um, so we have a big focus on sort of the innovative and entrepreneurial community here in Crystal City. So we have a place where if you have an idea, this is a, where you can come and you can actually make that idea into a reality. So before transit-oriented development was even a term, there was Crystal City. And our fundamental focus and the reason that we've grown up in the way that we have is because of access to transit. We're the only neighborhood in the world that has an airport that you could and would actually walk to. But we also have great transit facilities and Metro is a huge partner for us bringing in um, thousands and thousands of people every single day. And what Metro Way has done has made the community even more connected and able to circulate within. So we're very excited about the expansion of transit always here in Crystal City. If we didn't have Metro and the transit assets that we do, I don't think the community would have nearly the density or the economic success and viability that it has today, or the continued success and viability as various changes have happened over the years that have moved big government tenants out. Um, and then the market has sort of transformed itself in place over and over again that would not have happened at the pace and the recovery and the speed and, and actually the ability to even go forward in a better way than it would have if we had not had Metro. 
So Crystal City has changed dramatically. Um, it, you know, it used to be very business oriented, very quiet, um, but communities have very much started having a sort of an outward focus, which means people want to be outside. They want to be on the streets. They want to be on their laptops in beautiful parks and areas. And Crystal City had a lot of those things, but they didn't really function very well or they were underutilized. And with the creation of the Business Improvement District, which is largely what our organization does, there are events and activities, um, great restaurants and great things to do so that Crystal City has become more and more soulful place. We've always been built on a basis of great infrastructure and with the transit, with the convenience, with the accessibility, I mean, those are key things to a community as a whole. And here in Crystal City or here in the Washington area, if you think about it, you can actually spend your life in traffic or on the roads. And because of the way Crystal City was envisioned and the way that it has developed over the years, you can actually do all of the things that you would normally do within a short proximity. So you're spending your time in your life and enjoying that versus you're spending your time in transit in between. I think one of the things that we're most excited about here in Crystal City is the fact that we have built a place that is very active, there's a lot of art, um, it's extremely accessible, which of course Metro and Metro Way are a fundamental part of this. It's also very eco-friendly, um, which certainly relates somewhat to the transit piece, but we have farmers markets and recycling programs. Um, but because of that basic infrastructure, the active, artful, accessible, and green, we've created a space that lends itself very well to an innovation ecosystem, so that now more and more entrepreneurial companies are interested in places that, that, that their employees are, have, can easily get to, they have great things for them to do, then also offer them the opportunity to sort of grow and expand their business, test ideas, and that Crystal City is really excited to be that actual place for them. But also we're in the process of really looking at some new buildings, some new architecture, some new excitement in terms of the actual uh, physical space that surrounds us. So we're really excited about that. Here's what you can expect in Crystal City. Certainly more great events, more um, fun things that people and your employees can participate in. But in addition to that, we have more architecture coming, more residential coming, making it a better balanced community, and also some more things on the whole entertainment space because we spend so much time working in a certain area. It's great to be able to have entertainment and other options around us that make that neighborhood an even better place to live, work, play, and stay. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <laughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. That just really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Hi, we're here with Chris Colbert, who manages Metro's travel training program for our customers with disabilities and seniors. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Sure, you're welcome. Glad to be here. What does the travel training program do? Uh, the benefit is that it increases independence for those customers. It uh, allows them greater options. Metro has a huge area, so we can open those doors for them so that they can get to all of these different locations that they may not be able to if they're simply relying on friends or family or, or other programs. Yeah, because we do have the Metro Access service, um, but that's a reservation service. So it sounds to me like this really is about giving them independence and freedom to do more, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It allows them to, to do things whenever they want as opposed to having to plan something far in advance, which is, which is really what independence is all about, is being able to do what you want when you want to do it. Take me through sort of what you would do in travel training. Sure. So it, it's, it varies depending on the customer and their, their needs, and that, that ranges from teaching them about Metro's accessibility features such as 
uh, elevators and the buttons, uh, emergency call buttons, what certain lights on trains mean when doors are opening or closing, how to listen to those announcements, how to advocate for yourself and use all of the accessibility features that we have such as our kneeling buses, the ramps and lifts on buses, and also the priority seating on buses and trains. Making sure that they are able to use curb cuts and going to those locations where they can do those sorts of things. Now we have Metro Bus and Metro Rail and, and of course the Metro Access Services, but what about our regional partners? A lot of our customers might use one of our regional partners in Virginia, Maryland, or the district to then get to a rail station. So does this work with them as well? Absolutely, yes. We, uh, we do travel training through or on those jurisdictional buses or, or regional buses as well. And uh, the only caveat to that is that it has to be within our, our general service area. As far as the ride on the system is, is free if you qualify for Metro Access Services, correct? So instead of paying for your reservation on a Metro Access ride, you would ride the system for free if you're able to do this, correct? For, yes, for those customers we do allow that, or we do have that free benefit so that we can encourage them to use the bus and train as much as they, they can. We travel train about 2,000 customers every year and this is a very individualized um, program. So if, if you have a specific need, we're able to work with that need, uh, whether it's a mobility device or um, you have difficulty with, with remembering things, uh, we have tools that we can use to, to show you how to do all of those things and uh, make sure that you get to your destination safely. Calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, it just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. My yeah. whole family's wearing glasses. Yay. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. I'm Al Watson, a senior account representative in the Smart Benefits program. The way Smart Benefits works is it's an employer-sponsored program that allows employers to offer a benefit to their employees for their commute in the D.C., Washington metropolitan area. It saves them money by using their pre-tax dollars or tax-free dollars to commute on, of course, Metro Rail, Metro Bus, or any of the area buses in the system. And Smart Benefits is a web-based program that allows employees to receive money directly on their smart chip card for their commute to and from work. It's for primarily uh, any employer that has employees who commute using public transportation. It could be the private sector or it could be a public uh, federal agency employer. Employees using the pre-tax option annually, yearly, can save upwards to eight to $900 per year. The benefit to the business is if they're offering it as a pre-tax option, Oftentimes, those businesses don't uh, pay taxes on the pre-tax amount, such as unemployment insurance, FICA, state, which is why we encourage employees through their employer to participate in Smart Benefits. I can't think of a reason why someone wouldn't want to participate, especially if they're commuting to and from work on that particular system that accepts the Smart Chip Card and Smart Benefits. They could save those monies and not change their commute habits at all. What the employees should do is contact their HR or their benefits office and tell them they want to sign up. Go to our website, go to their employer, uh, encourage the employers to sign up contact someone like myself who'll be happy to assist them getting their account set up. If you're parking at a metro parking garage and you take the metro or bus, you can receive both transit and parking. The monthly max for each parking and transit is 255 would be a total of 510. And that is pre-tax or tax-free benefits. The money goes directly to your smart chip card. If you park in a metro, you use that same card to pay for parking, as well as using that same card to pay for transit. Contact me, I'll sign you up and get you in smart benefits and get you going right away. 
Thank you for joining us on this trip through Northern Virginia and join us again next month when we head to Maryland for another Metro Focus ride.